Hi, welcome to the course on a Spark structured streaming. We will uncover how to do real time processing with a Spark. We will be making use of Spark version 3. This course will cover all the concepts and features of a Spark structured streaming through theoretical concepts as well as hands on demonstrations. Eventually, this course will show you the road to become expert when it comes to Spark structured streaming. So let's get ahead and talk about what are we going to cover. We will be covering the difference between batch and stream processing and why do we need stream processing and what are the challenges associated with stream processing. Well, stream processing has its own set of interesting challenges, which is not there in the batch processing. So we are going to take a look at that. And then we will move towards the design and concepts of Spark structured streaming. So what does a Spark offer when it comes to stream processing? We will be starting to discover that. We will talk about the internals, like what are the sources, sinks, output modes, queries, triggers. What are the different operations you can perform when it comes to window operations or a simple aggregate operations, watermarks, join operations, how to deduplicate your events or records in the streams. There will be lots of hands-on lab to see these operations in action. Towards the end of the course, we will talk about what are the considerations you have to make when running a Spark streaming application in production like recovering from checkpoints, monitorings. Eventually, we will also understand how Spark is able to address the challenges of stream processing. We will take a look at the UI enhancements. The web UI has been enriched with some new features when it comes to structured streaming in Spark version 3. So we'll take a look at that. And I will try to guide you, like what shall, should you take next? to become an expert in the subject matter. Let's get us started. The prerequisite for this course is very minimal. You need to know basics of a Spark SQL, like uh, how does a Spark SQL query run? What are the ways to write a SQL query? You should understand what is a data frame, how to perform operations like selection or doing aggregations on a data frame. So basics of Spark SQL is uh, mandatory. And we will be making use of Python API. So Python is our programming language. So if you have understanding of basics of Python, or if you have worked with, with PySpark, then you are good to go. The idea of a Spark core is not kind of mandatory, but it's always desirable when you want to work with any of the libraries of a Spark, whether it be Spark SQL or a Spark uh, machine learning or a Spark streaming. Internally, everything works in the form of RDDs and understanding of a Spark core always helps to better visualize how things are working. However, it's not mandatory to know, but if you know it, it's going to help you. The first segment, what is a batch processing and what is a stream processing? Let's keep it simple. In the batch processing, you have some set of input, which can be from a database, which can be from a file. You would like to process it and produce an output. So things look like this. You have an input, you process it, you produce the output, and it's done. The process is short-lived. Uh, by short-lived, I mean it has a boundary. It may run for seconds, it may run even for days, but it has a boundary. The boundary is on the input as well. You know, before you start your processing, which are the input records or which are the input files you want to process. And if you repeat your processing over the input, unless there is any business uh, logic which prevents you to get a non-deterministic output, Many a times you will get the same output. So there's a fixed set of inputs and then the process starts and ends. Whereas in a stream processing, there is an input, there is a process and there is an output. But the difference is your process ideally runs for infinite duration. A process is something which keeps on running. 
it keeps on getting new inputs and it keeps on producing new outputs. So your input is unbound. Your output is also unbounded. Your process is something which keeps on running. So this is a kind of the difference you have to understand between a batch and a stream processing. Why do we need stream processing? Well, whenever you want to have some kind of speed in the decision making, you would like to get the result as quickly as possible. Let's say I want to analyze last one year of sales data. Well, that is something which is more fit for the batch processing. You have one year worth of data already with you. But what if you want to have a real time view of how your sensor devices are working? What temperatures or pressure readings you are getting it? Or you want to see how your orders, say you are working for an e-commerce company and you would like to see how your orders are getting generated. Which are the items which have higher you a number of users ordering it or if say if you are working for a music company and you would like to see what are the top 10 songs in the last 24 hours and you would like to continue this processing every one hour so every one hour you want to know the top 10 songs of last 24 hours so both the processing are completely different and when it comes to stream processing you may be interested in getting some kind of notification or alerts. So there is some kind of possible fraud activities. You don't want to wait for a day or a week to identify it. You would like to identify it as early as it happens. Maybe at the same time you detect any kind of spurious activity or you see any kind of possible fraud taking place, you should be able to take action over it. So when it comes to notification or alerts based on a series of events which are happening, stream processing is something you would like to go for. Not only it's about frauds, but if you want to have a real time metrics to see how your request response is behaving for your software, or maybe you have released a new version of your software and you would like to see how it is behaving across the globe, when you need a real-time KPIs, you need a real-time dashboard for, for that. Many a times there is ETL, which runs in a batch manner. You have your ETL running once a day, where you first ingest your data, then you transform and do further activities. But do you need to wait for entire day to start your ETL? If you start ingesting your data in, the, in, the, in, in a real-time manner, and you want to do transformations as early as possible when data comes so that you get your aggregates generated as quickly i mean multiple times a day refreshed at a very lower frequency then uh, stream processing is something you would like to ponder about not only this if you want to give a recommendation in a real time you may be having some set of historical data and then you keep on getting your new data. And based on your new data, your machine learning algorithms, your models can train themselves so that you give more precise recommendations or you do a more precise filtering. I mean, any machine learning algorithms you can apply in, a, in, a, in an online manner. Well, the stream processing has got lots of advantages and lots of use cases. But why stream processing is so much popular or why it is so much kind of accepted these days is because of two major reasons. The first is the speed, the lower latency it brings. And the second is the efficiency because of the incremental computation. Many a times you don't want to, you don't need to reprocess your data to get the new result. Let's talk about a simple example. Say you have some uh, integers, say 10, 20, and 15 coming in, and you want to get a sum. So some of these three will be, say, 45. Now, you get some new integers, say 20 and 60. 
So what is the sum of all the numbers? You don't need to reprocess all the numbers. You can take the result of the previous computation. And since this is a plus, this is an addition operation, you just add these two new values to the result of existing operation. And in this case, this will be 125, which is your new result. So you see the efficiency is there if you perform incremental computation. There are many computations which are which can be uh, cons which can be converted to incremental way. They're like average taking out maximum or many a times doing some kind of uh, there are many statistics like moving a statistics which you can perform in an incremental way and that avoids to reprocess the entire data set and uh, take advantage of the previous computation. So that is about the benefit of incremental computation. Stream processing is cool. It brings lots of benefits uh, to the table. At the same time, uh, it has its own set of challenges. Let's try to discuss them. One is you have to respond to the events at low latency as quickly as possible. And for that, your process has to keep on running. Your stream application may fail. This is a situation none of us, none of us want, but uh, this is a cruel reality. Your application may fail because of a business logic bug or because of any hardware failure or because of any network issue or because of any other temporary issue, your stream processing can fail. And when you recover from your failure, when you restart, you should be able to better manage the state it had before it failed. Let's talk about one simple example. You are taking account of which item has been ordered how many times. So there is item one, which has been uh, ordered 10 times. There is item two, which is has been ordered 20 times. And your new data is constantly coming up and you are generating this kind of aggregate. Now what happens is because of any reason there is a failure in the system and it takes you a while to recover it and your system is up. When your system is up, you may not get the data which you have already processed. Well, you may get it, but you may not get it as well. And in that situation, whatever aggregation you had performed, whatever state you had maintained, you should be able to recover from that state, that state and work further. So that is also a challenge uh, with stream processing to how do you recover from failure? How do you handle system restarts or application restarts? Your data may not come always in the same uh, sequence as it was generated. There is a concept of uh, event time which simply means when was your event generated? Maybe your event was generated from a mobile phone through some application and say it was generated at 12. But your stream processing may not be happening in the mobile app. Your stream processing will be happening somewhere in the data center. And let's say your mobile user was in Japan and say your data center is in USA. Now, when data flows through networks and arrives your data center at your data center the time may be 1201 considering every time is in the same zone let's talk about gmt your event was generated at 12 but your event was received in your data center at 1201 minutes so there was a gap of one minute and again, if there is any glitch in the network, there is some issue, uh, an event which generated at 12 may come to your system even later, maybe at 12.05. And there is another user, let's say, who is in Australia. And when he, uh, the event generated on his phone reaches to your data center when it was generated at 12, say 12.2, it reaches at 12.03. So you see the difference. At 12.03, this event is older. Actually, this is a newer than the event at 12.05 because they were generated at different times. So your processing, your ingestion time 
can be in a different order than your event time. There could be some events which were generated before but arrived to your system quite late. And there could be vice versa, like there could be events which were generated recently late and arrives to your system before. So how do you handle such kind of situation where you get out of order data? Your dot data may not be in the same sequence uh, as it was generated. And then there is also a concept of processing time. We will go towards it as we move ahead in the course, but the, you, I think you got a feeling of out of order data. Moving ahead, there are different types of windows in a stream processing. You can operate on event to event basis, but many a times you are interested to work on a bunch of records. Like, uh, for example, you want to process data of last uh, say 24 hours and you want to see what was the top 10 song and you want to do this processing every one hour. So there is a window of say 24 hours in this example, or you would like to see uh, how many uh, possible fraud activities were performed on a credit card in the last 10 minutes window. So you want to club together all the events for a credit card happening in the last 10 minutes. So windows are different types. We'll talk about tumbling and hopping windows. Then there could be custom windows. There could be session windows. So your stream processing should be able to accommodate all the requirements of the windows processing. When you process your data, when you apply transformation and you have to output the result, there could be different mechanisms of outputting the result. Whether you want to output only those records which have changed, or you would like to output the entire result set. So there are different mechanisms of handling how do you update the output. Your business logic may also change. The transformation logic can change, and your stream application should be supportive enough to take care of the new business logic without much pain. And finally, many a times you would like to do distributed processing where you will be making use of multiple machines in a cluster or multiple nodes in a cluster to handle your use case. And there is a possibility of load imbalance. So some machines may be heavily loaded, whereas some machines are simply sitting idle. So how do you handle the load? Well, this is a problem not specific to stream processing, but this is a problem of every distributed computation. So I hope you are able to understand what are the benefits, advantages of stream processing, as well as what are the challenges it brings along with it. In the next video, we are going to talk about the concepts of Spark structured streaming, and eventually we will reach the stage towards the end of the course where we will see how Spark handles these challenges at ease.